Hi everybody. In lecture this week, we talked about the differences between shape files and feature classes that you would find in a geodatabase, um, and um, particularly the different files that make up a shape file, just to make sure that everyone's clear on the difference between the two .shp files. So when you're looking at data in ARC, uh, the different extensions that build a shape file are aliased behind something called a .shp or shape file when it's in a regular folder. They're called feature classes if they're in a geodatabase. Um, I get a lot of questions on whether or not I work with geodatabases and I tend not to unless ARC forces me to and sometimes um, outputs are forced into a geodatabase um, because I can't see the file contents. Um, when you look in a geodatabase um, in ARC, it shows you the contents and they look beautiful, but when you do that in Windows Explorer, it's all encoded and that doesn't work for me. And you have to export and import data in and out of geodatabases. You can't just drag and drop or copy paste, which is, um, it really slows me down. So um, notice here that we've got these three data sets for the week two Fun with GIS challenge. And if we look at that data in Windows Explorer, Let's see here. Okay. Um, it looks like this. Um, they're locked for some reason. I had them. I don't have them open in a project, but I did earlier today. So these locks just basically mean it's open in ARC somewhere. So we have the same three data sets, cities, uh, the Bigfoot sightings, and the county populations. Um, and just just so you don't do this accidentally, know that the shape file, um, which is here, the .shp, is obviously not the same thing. This is the geometry, not the same thing as what we saw in ARC. This is the geometry and contains the extent values that you see when you look in the properties. Those values, the actual numbers, are embedded in the data, um, but the units for those numbers would come from the coordinate system. And the coordinate system or reference is in the PRJ file. So here's a PRJ file. The DBF is a database file. These are your attributes. And ARC gets all these things to work together by using index files. So there's um, this SHX is an index file that tells ARC how to coordinate all these different files into one thing that draws an ARC. So if you were to just take this SHP your data would be corrupted because you it, it depends on the other uh, file extensions to work. So starting there, if we add the data um, to our map, um, I want you to take a look at this and get familiar. You should open these attribute tables and look at them and know what kind of attributes you have to work with. But if we look at them one at a time, we've got our city stuff that we worked with last week. The North America Bigfoot sightings plots up as one point in the middle of the country. Um, so the question that I post everybody in class is, what do you do with data like this? What do you do when it just doesn't feel right? This is supposed to be Bigfoot sightings, and clearly there should be more than one in Kansas. Um, so the first thing I would do, and I'm just going to walk you through the steps of how I would explore data like this, I would look in the attribute table to see if there's more than one feature. Maybe the data is just wrong, right? Maybe I just sent you one feature class. But you can see here that we've got over 3,000 features in this table, so something's funky. The second thing I might do then is zoom to the layer, because sometimes that shows you that maybe there's one point in Canvas, but may Kansas, but maybe all the other data plotted up incorrectly in Finland. So if we zoom to the layer, we see, oh, wow, the data are there and they look like they're distributed across the contiguous US and maybe even Canada. It's hard to tell, um, but something's going on. There's some weird contour lines here. I would take the measure tool and just get a sense of the scale. You can see down here that the scale is one to about 400, which is really small. And if I measure across here, you can see that it's like 85 meters. So something went haywire. Um, it doesn't mean it's broken. Well, yeah, it does. It means it's broken. Okay, so let's look at the properties and see what we can learn in the properties. Um, I usually go to the source tab first and check the spatial reference, and you see that it's telling us there isn't a coordinate system for this data. It's unknown. So that's missing. 
but the extent is always going to have useful information for you. The extent values um, tell us the north, south, and east, westernmost coordinate values for this data set. So that, like I was saying, these are actually stored in the shapefile, I believe. They're stored in one of the required um, uh, file extensions. And I think it's the .shp. Uh, and these would have to be recalculated in order to change these. These are actually stored in the root data. But like you can see here, the units are not. The units will come from that PRJ file. And if we look back in Windows Explorer, you'll see that the Bigfoot sightings data is missing its PRJ file. And that's because I deleted it so that we could learn how to do this, because this happens all the time. Most often you end up with data that's been defined incorrectly, but it's really common for data to be um, incorrectly um, assigned a projection file where the units here will be meters, but for numbers like this that are very small. So hopefully you look at this and you say, wow, 69 and negative 167, 25, the units for these can't be meters because that would then plot up where, you know, the, the, let's see here, left and right, they're about 100 meters apart. And that's why it was plotting up. I measured 85, but about 100 meters across. What should the units here be? What do small values like this indicate for a data set? Hopefully you understand that they indicate latitude and longitude. And so what do these units need to be? They need to be degrees. And so the only way to assign degrees to these values is to tell ARC that these points belong in a geographic coordinate system. And what are the two geographic coordinate systems we use in North America? We use North American Datum of 1983, NAD 83, and we use WGS 1984. So we only have two choices, and they're really similar. So here's how you can test it. Um, if we again zoom out to um, a full data set, um, our map right now is drawing in a projection, and we know that because it's curved. It's trying to resemble um, kind of a natural feature for the contiguous US or maybe North America. If you zoom out, you can see that it's conic. If we were to cut this out and kind of fold it into shape, it would make a cone. So we're right now drawing in a projection. That's why ARC is just guessing and putting meters onto these values. It's not guessing. It's taking the display coordinate system, which is in meters, and it's putting that unit onto these extent values, and that's why it's drawing up um, so small. So if we change our display coordinate system to a geographic one, um, here, and then we want to go to geographic. Let's try WGS84. It turns out it works really well because they're so similar. So WGS84 redraws the map and it puts the Bigfoot sightings in the correct location because now the map has a unit of degrees and so these are being assigned degrees, and that makes sense with those really small values. They are um, latitude and longitude, which are measured in degrees. So now they're drawing correctly, and we could just run like this, but a missing um, PRJ file, a missing spatial reference is a problem. You have to fix that. You can't just function. ARC, surprisingly, in ARC Pro, I should say, will let you do a lot of calculations on a data set with a missing coordinate system, but it's really bad practice. Um, so what you want to do is use the geoprocessing tools. You find it in analysis and then tools in the geoprocessing window. And there are two tools that you need to use when you're dealing with coordinate systems. One is called project, and there's a special one for rasters. And the other one's called define projection. So it tells you right here that project takes spatial data and recalculates those extent values and your coordinate values from one coordinate system to another. But the first coordinate system has to be correct. And right now we don't have a coordinate system for this data. Define projection overwrites the PRJ file, 
or creates one from scratch, basically. And so defined projection is what we need to do because we don't have one to start with. Now, what if you put a projection in here? If you decide I'm only gonna be looking at data in Utah and all my other data is UTM zone 12, what if you just put in NAT83 UTM zone 12? You're telling ARC that these extent values are in meters because meters are the unit that's um, associated with a projected coordinate system. And your data is gonna plot up within 100 meters of the origin for UTM zone 12, which is down at the equator and you know spans this width. So it's still gonna plot up really close together, but it's gonna be down at the equator and right here. I hope that makes sense. So let's use defined projection we need to input our North America Bigfoot sightings because that's the broken data set. And in geographic, they actually belong in North American datum of 1983, but like I said, they're so similar, it doesn't really matter, at least for now. And we're just going to use the regular old one. These are all little modifications that have been done by different agencies. <clears throat> Notice that it's not asking me for an output the tool modifies the input data. That's really important to know as well. You'll get a, a little heads up when that's the case. So no, notice that nothing actually changed. It's just telling me that it ran correctly. But if we change our map back to a projection, um, let's pick, yeah, sure. So we're going back to a projection, but our Bigfoot data is still um, drawing correctly because now it has a correct coordinate system, and it's okay that it's um, geographic because ARC knows what to do with that. It knows, uh, whoopsie, knows how to, um, oh, I can't do th two things at once. Um, it knows how to transform the data on the fly as long as it has a correct coordinate system associated with it, and it does. And I was trying to open this, but I can't do talking at the same time, uh, extent. So now we have small values with units, which is awesome, and ARC can um, display everything correctly if we change the display coordinate system. It just does the math behind the scenes, okay? All right, so that's really important. Um, you're gonna need to know this coming up soon. Um, I'll just give you a little heads up. Uh, I will record another video with the answers to the challenge and walking through those, but um, that is wrangling broken projection files.